Everyone is preparing for what may happen tomorrow. Protesters hitting the streets to demonstrate, saying they want to end bad governance or they are protesting against hunger or they are dissatisfied with the management of our commonwealth. So, and some are saying don't go. Government is saying take it easy with us. We will do something. We're doing something. Be patient. So it's a lot of uh, narrative out there. Uh, by the end of the day, that's why we're having this conversation uh, from the beginning of the program we've had this year. So. Uh, we've also had the government, member of the Federal Executive Council, the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Tunja Lausa, who just joined us. And now I'm being joined uh, by a gentleman who we call the uh, Encyclopedia of Current Affairs. But he has a lot of common sense he wants to share from the youth perspective as far as this issue of good governance and a better Nigeria is concerned. His name, Peter Aka, uh, is an advocate for a new Nigeria content creator, but you may know him on TikTok, which is where the first place I actually saw him as Randy Peters. Welcome again. A big comeback. Thank this you This is the fastest much. comeback on the show. Yes. Yeah. I've seen. One of the fastest. <laughs> the that means you're a man of value. Thank you very much. We, 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 we saw the video of you trying to make sense of what is going on. Yes. Uh, for the benefit of the audience who haven't seen that video, mm. Maybe you can just, a shorter version of what you were trying to say to Nigeria as, as far as this uh, season of protest or not to protest is concerned. Thank you very much once again. Um, a shorter version of that video would mean protesting as a fundamental democratic right, but being sensitive with the you know, benefit of hindsight to pay attention to the most important issue such that at the end of this protest, because before you begin a protest, you should have a thought of the day after as you have begun to see the reactions from government. So what is the fundamental, most profitable thing that can come out of a protest? And that was where I anchored on the issue of electoral reform and, you know, the reform of INEC, as it were, before we move into constitutional and judicial reforms and all of that. But the election and the electoral system, being a democracy, as the um, doctor um, you know, alluded to, that the president is a Democrat. So we must pay attention and make this protest about everybody, including the president, working for a better Nigeria as against some people against the government. So literally all of us are the ones hitting the street, whether yes. physically or not. And yes. we need to... Uh, we started off uh, with uh, talking about goal setting. Yes. How goals have to be smart. Mm. That's the acronym. So mm. it has to be specific. Yes. That's the S. It has to be measurable. Yes. Then it has to be achievable, yeah. relevant, yeah. and time-bound. Yeah. You are taking a methodical approach to this you know whole process <laughs> and you are using the benefit of hindsight yeah. as well mm -hmm. so if you were to have a conversation a sit down and mm -hmm. as you said it should be like everybody on the same team so yeah. it's not us versus them mm -hmm. it's for nigeria so if you were to have a sit down with government on mm -hmm. the one hand what would you be telling government regarding how to handle this how to ensure that we all get the result that will better the lives of everyone don't forget government is also a part of the people yes um, before I get to government, let me begin by telling all Nigerian youths and everybody who is participating in this peaceful protest to know that um, we are doing a good thing. The Bible says in the book of Galatians 6 verse 9 that um, we should not be weary of doing good for in due course we shall reap if we do not lose heart. The Quran says in 282 that those who are able to do good, who believe and do good would inherit paradise, they will be there forever. Fighting for the betterment of the country is a good cause. And Nigeria will be great because Nigeria has you and I. And there is nothing that is more evil than seeing a country or your society in collapse and doing nothing because you become an accomplice. Now to the government, we have listened to a lot of statements from when this protest began. The president has met with traditional rulers, religious leaders, the ministers have spoken, everybody. But the president, what they fail to understand is the fact that there are underlying issues that are propelling at, at the base of this protest. If part of that energy has been channeled into addressing those issues, the protest will not even be there in the first place. So if the government is sincere about addressing the issues concept, you know, that Nigerians are facing on a daily, they will begin to go back to the drawing board and say, why are these children, why is there so much hunger? If you begin to look at hunger, then you will draw a straight line to corruption. You will draw a straight line to wastefulness and recklessness of government. The um, um, Honorable Minister was talking and she made it, she drew his attention to something. He pushed it to the legislative arm of government. It was not the legislative arm of government that built a new mansion for 21 billion for the vice president. It is the executive arm of government. Renovation.
renovation actually the renovation it was not the legislative arm of government that budgeted billions of naira to purchase suvs for the office of the first lady which is not a constitutionally recognized office so when nigerians see this kind of wastefulness on the part of leaders and then the leaders in turn ask the people to continue to sacrifice so the people are the gifts that continuous giving why the leaders are the ones who live in luxury you know affluence like royals and monarchs even in an economy like this i don't think that the lifestyle of our leaders and public office holders reflects the generality of what is going on in this so there is that disconnect and that is why we are where we are as a people so peter we, we may have had that conversation already yeah. with um government so to speak that sit down that Karade is um yeah. talking about because of the reference to the conversation that we just had with the minister of state for health now based on some of the explanations that he provided about government's efforts the economic policies our outlook internationally and the prevailing on nigerians for more time after which, you know, in a couple of years, we would begin to see results. If you heard all of that and you were a young Nigerian already prepared for the protest tomorrow, will that be an appeasement for you? Are those explanations satisfactory? No. That is not an appeasement for me. And that, is what, that was the reason for the video I made, trying to call attention to the persons who are at the fore of this protest. Look, once you make multiple demands, end hunger, those are infinite projects. You are going on a wise goose chase. What is hunger? What is causing hunger? A bad economy. What is the problem with Nigeria's economy? Corruption. 60% of Nigeria's corruption is administrative. Inflation of government contracts, budget padding, criminality through procurement and all of that. If you sit down, the president, today, automatically, they say bags of rice have come down to 40,000 naira. Before you know, they will say petroleum price will come down to this. There is a lot going in the petroleum sector that cannot, that even the government does not have a hand on. Remember, the president is the minister for petroleum. That is why I say we must pivot immediately to make it about elections and electoral reform. The president is a Democrat. The senators and lawmakers claim to be Democrats. The base of a democracy are free, fair, peaceful, and credible but, elections. But Peter, if you say make it about electoral reforms, yeah. elections are futuristic. We're yes. not going to have another election until 2027, I mm. believe, or months before that time. Yeah. So Nigerians will tell you, maybe they cannot wait till that time before they see change yes the problem is if we go for the low hanging fruits it is a setup for another protest if you allow yourself to lose this theme you have in protesting today and say we want to settle hunger the president will roll out plans and tell you okay everybody go back what happens when those issues resurge what happens when the inflation skyrockets again and a, a leader rigs himself into you know, office? It then means we need to spend a majority of our life protesting. We already had 16 years of PDP. We have 10 years of the APC now going to the 11th year. If we allow it to continue, we'll have 32 years of pro constant protesting. And we have elections coming in Edo and, you know, um, Ondo elections, which if we put the electoral system in place is a test because you will not wait until 2027 for you to talk about elections. Politicians are already concluding plans for 2027. Mm -hmm. So if the people are not smart enough to get the opportunity to pick their leaders, who they know can reform all of what we are talking about. Remember NSAS, five over five, five over five agenda, five NSAS. Five, yeah. Meanwhile, the major challenge was a bad law enforcement agency or agent. If you talked about SARS alone, you will have to protest for DSS, EFCC, civil defense, the Nigerian army, customs. What happens to getting a leader who reforms the entire law enforcement as against ending SARS? At the end, what happened? The president said we have disbanded SARS, but we have open SWAT, which they had the powers to do. Where did the officers from SARS go to? They went into SWAT. They went back to mainstream police. What is the issue with police brutality today? That is why I'm calling on the attention of Nigerians that if you focus on one specific thing and you make it the, you know, covering factor, we will lose the bigger picture to get a total reform that we would need. Any leader who knows that you can vote him out or through the electoral process would sit up. So let, let's, let's, let's break it down. Let's yes. unpack it. Yes, sir into short term and long term yes sir i know you don't like populating it yes so let me give you the mileage of three to five yes that we need to do in the immediate yeah and maybe in the in the midterm yeah that if you were to speak to these protesters uh, because literally all of us are protesting well, even the president is protesting yes <laughs> <laughs> at some point mm. so 
if we're to do five, three to five things, mm. short and medium term, yeah. what will they be? The short and medium term issues, hunger, that was exacerbated by the issue of petroleum subsidy. And that is why I will tell you that, I will keep maintaining that it's a complex web. If the president comes out today to give you a statement that petrol has come down to a certain price, believe me, the money or whatever that will be used to source that will come from another part of the economy, and the Nigerian people will still pay for it. Of course, the short-term projects will be bringing inflation down, bringing the cost of PMS, which is what a lot of Nigerians, they accuse in filling stations. Some people are buying for as high as 800 naira now. Nigerians will see some level of respite, but we should know that these things could just be washing and setting. If they come back again, if they are not sustainable, what do you do? The president will definitely take steps, as you have heard him. Talk. They say they are reducing tax income um, on um, imported goods. So definitely Essential we will see action. some, you know, movement on the part of prices of goods and all of that. They might make a statement on petroleum, say we want to cap it, but at whose cost? At what cost? Those immediate impacts we are going to see, I am, you know, curious to know at what cost and at whose cost and what would be the long-term implication of our short-term solutions. And I think that is why communication is quite big. Uh, some have said that this is five brigade approach that mm. they're seeing from government. They wonder where's the president one, where's the president's spokesperson, or where are the president's the spokespersons? Yes. Where are they? This is a time. In fact, you shouldn't have waited up until this point to start doing you know, mobilization that Need we're Jake. beginning mm. to see. And that has been the challenge of governance, yeah. communicating, communicating, ensuring that they build trust. But yeah. without communication, are transparent and accountability you cannot have trust yeah. or transparency and accountability. You can't have trust. So I'd like you to speak to, um, you've spoken to what the strategy should be, right? Yeah. But then they say that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've heard that for decades. Yeah. Personally, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Now the challenge is the tunnel is not measurable. Of course. You don't know if it is five kilometers to the end of the tunnel mm. or 10 kilometers to mm. the end of the tunnel. <laughs> you don't know if the light is the, full voltage yeah. or the low voltage, yeah. as they say. You're not even sure what to envision when they say there is light yeah. at the end of a tunnel. So yeah. as a matter of communication, yeah. uh, again, the government has a lot to do in this. Yes. What kinds of communication mm. do you expect from this government beyond there is light at the end of a tunnel? Beyond there is light at the end of a tunnel, there will have to be practical steps that show sincerity on the part of government. Mr. Kayode, this government protested against removal of fuel subsidy 12 years ago. And you had the, an APC chief in the former governor of Ikiti State say it gleefully at an event that we did it because of political reasons during the Jonathan administration. There is a huge trust deficit. That is why the president is a Democrat, the National Assembly, they are Democrats. We have to visit the National Assembly. Let the lawmakers give us a guarantee. The president should come out and boldly state that I am guaranteeing free, fair, peaceful and credible elections. When 109 pe people who died according to CDD report will not have to die. Elections will not have to be by the violent. When you give Nigerians that guarantee, but then they get to long talk term that Nigeria, is long term. Then so. short term, you can begin to put the palliatives. They say they are doing conditional cash transfer. It has not proven to work. Buhari did it for eight years. They say they are going to bring down the cost of rice. Let us be hopeful. Let us remain peaceful. That about, is the most important thing. What about the thing. governors, mm -hmm. the local government chairman, mm -hmm. the councillors, the state assembly legislators? Mm -hmm. They are the leaders that can count yes. that are not As being talked holders. about yes. they have, as well. They have a role. It is the, the president is the father of the nation. He would impose on, he meets with the governor's forum, and they can come together, see Southwest governors, how do we alleviate? That is what leaders should do. That is what leadership is about. There is, there, these people, they, they are going through pain. As in, in the South-South, can we get security for them to farm? Can we get storage facilities? When you come up with such ideas, the people will see that these persons represent they understand and feel our pain, and they are working towards it. And naturally, Nigerians are very understanding people. Once you see the seriousness of government, mm -hmm. Nigerians will, they will begin to tell you, you to calm down, calm down, the president is working. So uh, just, just uh, as we begin to wind down, there's, there's a question I, I want you to answer as a, uh, as a citizen. Yes. Uh, because observing polit the political class and the electorate, mm. it's like we live in two different worlds. Yeah. I raised this question, I've forgotten who I raised it with. 
the presidents or our leaders always coming out at the wrong time. Yeah. Good luck, Jonathan, former president. When Boko Haram started, it came out at the wrong time. Mm. Perhaps thinking of his next election, whether he wants, he into, wants to uh, appease the North or not. And then things festered. Mohamedou Buhari, former president of Nigeria, mm. took one month from one person dying of COVID to even his own chief of staff, almost 100 people, yeah. before the president, we were even worried, the president, did he catch COVID, COVID. or not? Mm. Same thing happened in NSAS. Before he came out, two days after. And then when he came out, he was saying people want to topple his government. Now this has come. Mm. President Bola Tinubu has not mm. come out to say a word yeah. yet. We're hearing from ministers. Mm. Some of his aides are saying the right things. Others are saying yeah. what I don't want to say. Yeah. Discordant tone. Yeah. What is it with the leaders mm. and not coming out at the right time? When 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Leaders who do not feel beholden to the people are those who act in that kind of manner. President Tinubu must understand that he is the president of the country. These protest people who are trying to paint it as Tinubu must go are being mischievous. In fact, Tinubu has to stay because if he goes, who will replace him? The issue is, as a leader, you must show empathy and commitment to the plight of the citizens. If you delay it, you only further make the situ uh, a bad situation worse. Nigerians are ready to listen to their leaders if they see seriousness on the part of those the people. People are suffering. People are hungry. People are dying. As a president, come out and address them and show commitment that your word is your bond. So are you oh. going out to protest tomorrow? Peacefully. Okay. Uh, Mr. Peter Akas, <laughs> I almost got the senior advocate. <laughs> <laughs> Advocate for a new Nigeria and content creator, the Encyclopedia of Current Affairs. We, we should have taken you, maybe we asked him how many protests have happened since 1960. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. We appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Oh boy, what a day. So, we're all counting down. Uh, the, the, the whole idea is the fact that everybody has to be peaceful, whether you're for or against. The most important thing is that you must be peaceful because if you're not peaceful, the institution of states will come on you, and that's not what we want as a people. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeffrey Zong. And we must stay positive regardless of what tomorrow may bring, and we hope that indeed security agents will provide security for all. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow. I am Bukola Koka. But what is this show without your feedback? So let's just run through all of the messages you've been sending in. The very first one is from Deshua Kromnan, who says the government has proposed a lot of measures to tame the protesters. But aside the implementation of the minimum wage, nothing is visible or visibly done, this user says. So more, more communication from government. Well, Abubakar Sadiq from Delta State said, let them cut down cost of governance, cut down salaries and allowances of all political office holders. The president, vice president, NSA, chief of staff, SGF, senators and house of representatives all should be cut down by 50%. Akoso David from Abuja said, to protest is our constitutional right, but I think if anyone is not satisfied with what is happening in the country, they should wait for the elections to express their displeasure. And Sam Yorke from Benue State, McCordy, precisely says, Nigerians have the right for peaceful or to protest peacefully as stipulated in our constitution. However, our youth and indeed all Nigerians have a duty to strengthen, protect and preserve our democracy, which gives us right and freedom and therefore avoid every temptation to go violent and destructive. That is what we want to do, Jojo and not war war. So let's keep the engagement on. It's a democracy, absolutely. I'm Kairo Kikilu. Stay with Channels Television uh, for all of the breaking stories and what you need to know. Goodbye.